Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. It's early March and I'm here at Honeymoon State Park Island in Florida here near Tampa. And today's episode is going to be about sea urchins. They are so fascinating and I want to tell you everything you should know about these amazing, fascinating creatures that we know as sea urchins. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. One of my favorite things to do is walk down the beach and go beach coming. You never know what the ocean's going to throw up onto the sand for you to find. And many of my episodes have begun with beach coming and what I found on the beach that particular day. One of the things you might find on a beach like this, here I'm on Honeymoon Island State Park in Florida, you might walk down the beach and find a shell or exoskeleton that's technically known as the test of a sea urchin. This is what's left after a sea urchin dies. Sometimes you'll find bits and pieces of one, and if you're very lucky, you may find this fragile test intact. Occasionally, you might also find one that still has some spines on it. But if it's alive, you want to be sure to throw it back in again. The test is a really beautiful structure. It's so intricate and symmetrical with it, all its patterns on it that are left after these spines fall off. Just such a beautiful thing to find on the beach. This is some really great sea urchin habitat. I've been walking from the pet beach down uh, in this direction where there's a lot of rocks at low tide exposed and it's in, in between these rocks where sea urchins might attach. Some of the locals told me that you can easily find them if you go out and snorkeling around these rocks in the summertime, but I was not so lucky today. I was not able to find any live sea urchins. So, but I really wanted to share with you about live sea urchins. So today I'm off to the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center, where as a sign above their door says, we can meet the locals. Tampa Bay Watch is a nonprofit founded in 1993 and it's dedicated to habitat restoration and protection of the Tampa Bay Estuary. They have many diverse programs oriented to enhancing education and protecting the bay. And this fantastic discovery center here is on the St. Pete Pier in St. Petersburg, Florida. They have displays and exhibits and an aquarium featuring a lot of their local organisms and their ecology. But no are more fun and educational than their touch tank, where I had the opportunity to see and handle and film close up live sea urchins. Here in the tank are some local species that they picked up locally. And I think this short spine sea urchins here, where they're also known as the variegated sea urchins, were actually picked up on Honeymoon Island. The other species they have here in the touch tank are the slate pencil urchins, or simply known as pencil urchins. So we're going to take a closer look at these two species. And let's first look at this short spine sea urchin. As the name implies, it has shorter spines than other sea urchins, and it's also known as the variegated sea urchin. These spines seem to be a warning not to pick up a sea urchin, but they actually don't sting. The spines are relatively inert. These spines do help discourage them from being eaten by a number of predators, but there's a lot of things that do enjoy eating sea urchins, and one in particular is the California sea otter. Holding the sea urchin in my hand, you can see out of water, they're a little bit different when you view them under the water. And when you view them in the under the water, you can see there's two kinds of appendages. One are the short spines, but the others are these amazing moving tubules. These tubules are known as tube feet, and they have like little suction cups on the end of them. And you can see that it's in constant motion. I never got tired of watching this thing move its spines and its tube feet. 
These sea urchins will often pick up shells and debris on the sand and use them to camouflage or cover themselves, or maybe perhaps to protect themselves from light when they're here exposed in the touch tank. The mouth of the sea urchin is actually on the bottom of the sea urchin. And here you can see its mouth structure. And if we wait a little bit, it'll eventually expose the inner parts that consist of five teeth-like projections, which they can use to capture and grind and scrape their food off of rocks. This five-part symmetrical structure is sometimes called Aristotle's lantern. This sea urchin here, in Florida is pretty much opportunistic in terms of its diet. It'll feed primarily on algae and plants, as well as any invertebrates that it may pick up or any pieces of detritus or, or decaying material they may find on the seafloor bottom. They're very opportunistic in terms of their diet. In California, these sea urchins can be problematic and can actually grow in such numbers that they'll destroy a kelp sea forest. Scientists soon learned that the ecology of the kelp forest depended on their keystone species, the sea otter, which eats the sea urchins. When otters are present, the sea urchin population is limited and the kelp forest stands in all its grandeur. If you eliminate the sea otter, the sea urchins take over and completely destroy the kelp forest. While the mouth of the sea urchin is on its bottom, it actually excretes through the top, through its anus, and through a structure called the madreporite. While sea urchins at first glance would seem like an organism that's attached or stationary, Using its two feet and its spines, it can move across the bottom quite well. Both of these sea urchins are part of the phylum Echinoderm, and the name comes from the ancient Greek, where Echinos means hedgehog and derma means skin, so they're aptly named. This sea urchin is known as the slate pencil urchin, or simply pencil urchin, and it's because its spines look somewhat like a pencil. It's different from the short-spined sea urchin in that its spines are longer and it doesn't have the readily visible tube feet like on the short-spined sea urchin. While sea urchins have some limited muscle-like structures, most of their movement comes from the control of their water vascular system. The water vascular system works these tube feet on these sea urchins and works these spines and it works just like a hydraulic system in a tractor or a piece of heavy equipment. It's a very effective and powerful system for movement and control. Sea urchins reproduce by simply releasing enormous numbers of sperm and eggs into the water column, hoping that the sperm cell and the egg cell will find each other in the sea environment. When they do, and you have a fertilized egg, it will live as a larva in the water column until it eventually settles to the substrate and starts to grow into a sea urchin organism. Some of the sea urchins we saw here carried some hitchhikers that found a great place to live in and amongst the spines protected from predators. And so they have this neat association or symbiosis with the sea urchin. So the next time you're walking down the beach and are lucky to find the test of a sea urchin, I hope you'll know a little bit more about them and the creature from which this shell or test came from. I want to thank the Tampa Bay Discovery Center for letting me film in their facilities. And if you get a chance and you're in Tampa and you need to go and see this center, the guides and docents there are excellent. You can learn so much. It's really a great place to visit. And remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And if you're on the coastal or Florida area, check out my Florida playlist. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm really covering a lot of Florida wildlife, flora, and fauna. Well, thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.